chi 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 uh, my name is Scott Novotny, and uh, uh, you might have seen me on MTV. MTV, anybody? Uh, comedy on the road? Cops, how about cops? See me on cops? Uh, face little pixelized mullet. I've been in the business for over 30 years, but I didn't know I was a big deal until I came to Provo, Utah. I got here, even my GPS said, you have arrived. <laughs> Very nice. Can you guys see me okay? Everybody can see me fine, yeah? The reason I bring that up, I'm from uh, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, and I, yeah, thank you very much, thank you. Are you from Minnesota? Brainerd. Oh, Brainerd, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Over there by Nishwa, you buy some moccasins, did you? Oh, you gotta buy some moccasins. Okay, we'll get to you in a second there, buddy. Yeah. Well, I went to the, 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 the was it, uh, saw Paul McCartney, and uh, um, I got those $80 seats, and uh, I'm in the third tier, you know? So Paul McCartney comes out, he's this big. Ironically, he was the actual size of a beetle, which was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> It's good to be here. Yeah, so Minnesota, that's right. Yeah, a lot of people at Minnesota, right away, he said, he's on Minnesota, but I don't hear the Fargo thing. I know I did the, oh yeah, but that's how we really talk there. Isn't that right there, Mr. Brainerd? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, we really do talk just that way. And we all wear this hat. I'm surprised you don't have yours with you there. Because <laughs> it's the law. I mean, am I right about that? Oh yeah, I put this hat on and right away, the women in uh, Minnesota audiences, oh boy. <laughs> That's a hot dish just waiting to happen. <laughs> I got this hat actually for free. Can you believe that? For free. A guy across the street, he's out there shoveling. He throws the hat across the street. Hey, funny guy, you can have that hat for your act. I said, that's a pretty nice hat. You, what did you get that hat? Fleet Farm. Well, that's a good hat, let me tell you that. He says, well, I don't need that hat no more. I said, why? What, where are you going? He says, I'm moving south. I'm done with these winters. Where are you moving south to? I don't know. I'm moving south. Well, where to? He says, I don't know. I'm going to take this shovel and slap it on my truck. I'm going to head south until somebody goes, hey, what's that thing? <laughs> then I'm getting close, he said. Yeah. There we go. Here, do I have hat hair? Do I have hair at all, actually? I, God, I've gotten older. I thought I, I thought I was losing my hair, but I'm not. It's actually growing inward and coming out my ears, my nose, my butt, and my back. Ooh, chi 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 Getting all is fun. Hey, I, I don't have to do drugs, though, let me tell you, to get high. All I gotta do is bend over, tie my shoes, and get up fast. <laughs> I'm in a planetarium right now. <laughs> Miss the autumns. Uh, I love the autumns here. The autumns are so cool. They, when they, is they're going out, they're going out in style. They're going out in color. That is so cool. Why don't we take a page from that in nature? Why, as we get older, why don't we turn color? Wouldn't that be cool? You know, you know, come on, we're going down to the senior center. Grandpa's turning a beautiful burnt sienna. Come on, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up. Come on, he's peeking. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. So I'm reading in Forbes magazine uh, about retirement. And don't judge me. I was at the dentist's office and all the highlights magazines were gone. So I'm <laughs> reading Forbes. <laughs> And according to uh, Forbes magazine, we're supposed to save about a uh, million dollars in savings uh, to retire properly. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen for me. And I'm looking at myself, 80 years old, welcome to Walmart. <laughs> Here's a smiley sticker for you. <laughs> and some pocket lint, that's free. The carts are right over there. You see them? Me too. Get them yourself. <laughs> I don't know where anything is. I lie. The Depends are on aisle 13. <laughs> I'm looking forward to those sunset years I am. Only something weird happens to me while I'm at, at Walmart. I was, this is a true story. I'm at the frozen food section, and bless a little elder. She comes up to me. She says, young man. And I went, okay. <laughs> You're tall. All right. Can you help me with that ice cream right up there? I'd be more than happy to do that. Here, put your foot right there, baby. Let's give you up. A... And the president of the Smarty Pants Club. Yeah. 
Also, I'm reading in this Forbes magazine. This is pretty interesting. How many people own pets here? Where are my pet owners out there? Yeah, 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 pets? Yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense then. I, I was re- here's the article I was reading. The, the uh, pet industry is the seventh biggest money-making industry in the United States right now. Isn't that amazing? Seventh biggest. They have pet stores even at the outlet malls. They're called Discount Pets at the outlet malls. And so discount pets at the outlet malls, what do they sell there? Irregulars? What do they got? You know? <laughs> like a cat with a lisp. <laughs> I mean, sorry about that. I think I sprayed that whole roll. You know? I think a little poodle with dyslexia. Wow, bow, wow, bow, wow, bow. <laughs> got a chameleon with an attitude problem. I ain't changing. <laughs> and of course, the aquarium fish are like one fin. Okay, here we go again. Here we go. Here we go. I'd have a bag full of animals coming out of there, I would, yeah. yeah. So I got, I got two dogs at home. Neither one of them I know I was getting. Isn't that funny how that works sometimes, yeah? One I got on my, my 13th wedding anniversary as a gift. I didn't know 13 years was dog. <laughs> but if you look it up in the book, 13 years is fur, ha ha, you know? So I said, what did you just give me? It's a chihuahua puppy. Well, good, I thought you gave me a fruit bat without wings, so. <laughs> Look at that. No matter where I put it, the eyes stare right at me. That is so bizarre. You have an unfortunate face, you do. <laughs> and now I'm in love with you. you know? And it's so masculine, so masculine to walk a little chihuahua, especially when he's wearing a little polo shirt. Oh, man. You know, walk, walk, tickety, 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 walk, walk, tickety, 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 tickety. And every time I walk this dog, someone will come, oh, what kind of a dog is that? What kind of a dog is that? It's a greyhound. I left him in the dryer too long. (laughs) So it didn't take us long, about a year. He's lonely. He needs a little buddy. I said, well, okay. So went down to the pound, got a pound puppy. Very nice dog, but a bit of a beggar. Anybody got the beggar dogs at home, you know? Yeah, the professional. This is a professional beggar dog. You know, and there's, the, you know, we set the table. That dog is nowhere to be seen. But the moment you put the fork in the food, you look down. <laughs> hey. Hey, look down here. Look how little and tiny I am. And look how big and fat you guys are. <laughs> hey, 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 well, what's he, what's he, what's he eating up there in this? Huh? That smells pretty good. Huh? Why don't you share that with your little buddy down here? Just, just shit. Look down here, look down here, look down here, look down here. <laughs> look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. You give me the meat. You get, come on, you don't have to give me the good stuff neither. You can give me scraps or gristle or the stuff you're gonna put down the garbage disposal. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be 10 times better than those little Elpo nibbles that have been sitting over in that corner since Wednesday collecting dust because you found a coupon in the Sunday paper. And that dog will eat anything, anything. My daughter got sick and she threw up and I went to clean it up. <laughs> oh, bad dog, did you really? Oh no, bad dog. And you missed a spot right over there too. <laughs> but they're like part of the family, aren't they? This like part of the family, I don't think so. You know, my dogs, I don't care how old they are, they're still gonna poop and pee on the rug, you know? If my wife pooped and peed on the rug and then scooted on the carpet with her butt, I think I'd say to myself, time to put mommy away. (laughs) That's what I'd be thinking. (laughs) But we love them, don't we? We love them. And our voices totally change when we talk to animals, totally. We're looking out the window, oh, look at that rain come down, it's really raining out there. It's really raining out there. It's really raining out there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Does that thunder scare you? I bet it does. I bet it just scares you. Doesn't look like I need to go for that walk. Did I just say walk? I shouldn't have said walk. It's a good thing I didn't say treat. Did I just say treat? <laughs> I better not say squirrel, because that will drive you crazy. Here, look at the, look at the ring. Come down. Look at the ring. There's the dog. I think we should talk to people the same way we talk to animals. 
Wouldn't that be a better Provo, wouldn't it? You meet somebody on the street, oh, hello. Oh, look at you, look at you. You're so busy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're so busy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, yeah, right there, right there, right there. <laughs> then guys just find your wife comes home. She's at a fender bender with a car. It's no big deal because you get to scold her, but it's fun scold. You either go, oh, bad, bad wife. You are bad. Yes, you are. You're so bad. Don't you look at me like, stay, stay. Can you take her outside, rub her nose in the dent? You know? So you guys are laughing. You'd never leave that toilet seat up again, would you? Huh? You guys are a great crowd. Yes, you are. You're so sweet. So Provo, this is pretty interesting. I actually looked it up. I bet you guys don't know this. Provo is an ancient Indian word for people who uh, drive slow with their blinker on. Did you know that? <laughs> I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> well, there's a Minnesota tray. We just get, oh, we get so angry when people have their blinker on because we want to help them. We want to let them know that their blinker's on. Why do, uh, why do we do? We just do. I don't know why we do that. We pull up next to them. Hey, 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 your blinker is on. Your blinker, I'm trying to help you. Blinker, your blinker is on. Blinker. They're going, hello. Are you, are you from Brainerd? Hello. No, no, blinker. Look at the blinker. See, look at the blinker. It sounds like stinker. Blinker, blinker. Hello. No, I don't want to know you. You're a stupid head with your blinker on. Or this one. Or you, your, your gas cap is open. Your gas cap. Your gas cap is open. Your gas cap is open. The circly thing. How do you even do it? The circly thing. It's slightly ajar. And the cap is dangling like, like this thing, you know? And the gas could be leaking out. You could light a cigarette, throw out the window, boom, you're dead. Hey, your seatbelt is hanging out the door. Your seatbelt, seatbelt, seatbelt seat belt is hanging out the door. Why aren't you wearing your seatbelt anyway? Click it or take it, don't you know? Isn't your car going bing, 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 bing? Mine does, it's very annoying. Hey, there's a coffee cup on the top of your van. It looks like a Starbucks. You probably paid a lot of money. And, never mind. Hey, there's a baby in a booster chair on the top of your van. You're a very bad father. Never mind. Your blinker is on. Hello, no. And then you'll actually pull in front of them and we put our blinker on to teach them what they're doing. Now see what I'm doing? See, see, blinker, blinker. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Hey, that guy got his blinker on. What a big old dummy, just like me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Why do we care? I don't know. It's so crazy. Here's another thing I think is pretty funny on the highway. When you bond with somebody when they have the exact same car, exact same color. Do you guys know what I'm talking? You pull up next to them like... We <laughs> got the same car. <laughs> it's like a mirror. Huh? <laughs> do you sell Mary Kay products too? <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about with the pink Cadillac, yeah? My mother was a Mary Kay salesman when I was growing up. She actually won a used pink Cadillac, so she must have been kind of a crappy salesman. But I always felt sorry for my father. Every so often, his car would break down. My dad would have to drive around Rochester in that pink Cadillac. There's my dad, the pimp. <laughs> He'd come home kind of sheepishly. Oh, I think I got a couple orders for you. There you go. <laughs> So I grew up in Rochester, Minnesota, which is, and the, you know what I really remember? I remember when I was, Christmas time was always the best. We'd go to grandma's house and um, that, all the relatives were there, the good relatives, the bad relatives, and then the relatives you looked at and go, mm, gosh, some of the DNA is in me too. Ooh, this is scary. You ever had that? That's, those are the scary guys. And then this is how we do it. Now, I don't know how you guys do your Christmas. Oh, here, here's how we do it. So we all sit around in a big semicircle around the tree and we have to open up the gifts one by one, by infinity, by one. There's 150 gifts. And then, and then uh, sometimes you have to pass the gift around because you get, what, what did you get? What did you get this year? Pass that around so we can all see that. There we go. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's one of those baskets filled with smelly soap. Oh, it's, it's potpourri. It's called potpourri. Oh. <laughs> 
don't eat that. That's not candy. That's soap. Oh, oh that'll go nice in your bathroom. Yes, we've remodeled our bathroom, and uh, we took pictures of the before and after with a little flip book. Would you like to see that? Yes, we would like to see that. That'd be very entertaining. Here, let me videotape this moment. We'll watch it again. Ba 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 ba. And uh, Walmart a return on Monday. Okay, good. <laughs> So we start from the youngest and go to the oldest, which means grandma, bless her heart, was at the end of the food chain of gifts. And I love my grandma dearly, but boy, she just milked the spotlight. You know, she just did. And uh, there are the kids in the starting box, and here's grandma. She's in her black dress with her pearls, and she smelled of Oude toilet that she got from the Woolworths, a big jug of it. Oh my God. Her hair, nice permy, permy, salon perm. Oh, mm, permy. Yeah. Permy smell. Here's my grandmother opening up her gifts, and she smiled like this, too. <laughs> hey, smile, Grandma. That's good. All right. Here's my grandma opening up gifts. Maybe some of you can relate. Here she goes. <laughs> Is this for me? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you shouldn't. This is just... Oh, it's such pretty wrapping paper. Is, can you see that? Isn't that pretty? Here, let's pass that around. Oh, oh, that was quick. I'm going to save this bow. That's a pretty bow. I'm going to take that and put it in my bow bag. In my bow bag. Oh, I always feel like I'm turning into Droopy the dog. My bow bag, sir. I'm so happy, my bow bag. And there's a little card. No, it's a tag identifying the gift. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas to Grandma. There was a little snowman on that. Here, let's pet. Oh, that was quick. I'll just put that in my boo bag. And here's my favorite line. Here it comes. Here it comes. I don't want to rip the paper. I want to save the paper for next year. Take it into my, my bedroom and iron it and put it in my special Christmas drawer because in my mind, I'm still in the Depression era. So we'll start over here or over here. I'll use my fingernail over here. Here's where kids come in handy. Kids just walk up to grandma and go, hurry up! It's a picture frame with us in it. And on the back, a coupon to Old Country Buffet. Move it! Where's Grandpa? Grandpa died waiting for it to open up the gift. Mother! So colorful to watch those kids spontaneously combust underneath the tree. My, and my grandmother always set up this cardboard manger scene that she got from like Ben Franklin, and she had that shag carpeting. Do you guys remember the shag carpeting? So the, 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 you know, the, the manger scene never sat right. It looked, you know, it's like the wise men are always like, oh, you're, like the, hey, they're into the mirror, woo, you know, you know. They're just laying all over the place. And Joseph's neck got bent really bad, so he put a little fudsicle stick glued to his back. Looked like he was in a camel whiplash accident. And then the baby Jesus like disappeared for like two weeks. We finally found him in the kitty litter box. The grandma said, that's no place for the baby Jesus. <laughs> kind of right about that, grandma. So, yeah. Oh, and I should, I should also mention this. Uh, speaking of relatives, my parents just celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? 65 years, that's nuts. Anybody here, 50 years of marriage or more uh, that's still awake? Anybody? Uh, <laughs> No, not at all. Yeah, pretty much this is, it got dark, so they're not coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I asked my dad, what's, what's the secret to 65 years? He goes, I'll tell you the secret to 65 years of marriage. For 65 years, it's not a darn thing I wouldn't do for her. And for 65 years, it's not a darn thing she wouldn't do for me. And for 65 years, we had done a darn thing for each other. <laughs> of course, I got my Uncle Roy. He's had to step in. You know, if he got one of these guys, the greased hair, cigarette, you know, yeah, I've been married to... Not Dottie over there for 35 years, but seems like five minutes underwater. <laughs> you got one of these guys in your family, he's always got the classic line, you know, how, how you doing, Uncle Roy? I uh, can't complain, but I always do. <laughs> Where you going? I'm going crazy. You want to come along? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you late, Uncle Roy? Better late than pregnant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> we're, we're at a Walmart, and he looks over, he goes, see that guy in a wheelchair over there? Yep. Never trust a guy in a wheelchair with dirty shoes. <laughs> my Uncle Woody was on his fourth wife. He's passing around the pitch. It's my trophy wife. It's my trophy wife. Uncle Roy goes, I don't think she took first place. <laughs> sad, you know. <laughs> Poor Uncle Woody, he, he died recently in the most tragic accident, the weirdest accident. He, was, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Okay, so he's in Houston and uh, by the uh, overpass by the airport and he gets a flat tire. So instead of calling AAA, he's got to get out and fix it himself. Traffic is going like crazy. So he gets out, he gets the extra tire out, he sets it down and starts jacking up the, the flat, and that tire starts spinning and off it goes. So he goes after, the, you know, the other tire, and he goes after it right through the traffic. Traffic doesn't get him, folks, that's not it. He, he gets the, the wheel, just as it's about to bounce over the overpass, he grabs it, the momentum of the tire takes him with him, and he goes down 100 feet to a death. And that's a true story. We're all sitting at the funeral going, that's the weirdest. <laughs> and Uncle Roy goes, well, I guess you could say he died of despair. <laughs> We're all thinking it. We're all thinking it. So anybody, uh, any, uh, any birthdays today? Any birthdays at all out there? Like, right here, okay, happy birthday to you. Yeah, this is your birthday actually today? Yeah. And is this your birthday present coming to see the comedy show? No. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> well, you got ripped off, dude. <laughs> you know what, take him out dancing tonight, okay? Dancing, yeah? <laughs> Look at him go, shut up. <laughs> I was just okay with the comedy show, man. Yeah, how long have you guys been married, how long? 16. How long? 16 years, that's a comfortable age. You guys don't even need to go out on a, like a Friday or Saturday night just stay at home. There she is over on the couch in her sweatpants and her Harry Potter t-shirt. Her hair is up in rubber bands, no makeup on, sipping some cheap wine out of a 7-Eleven big gulp. And you're going, I want her, I want her bad, huh? Yeah. Take him out, take her out dancing, really, you know. The guys just, we, we, we will we'll dance. The guys will dance, ladies, we really will. But we got that great line in the back of our pocket. I'll dance with you, I'm just waiting for a good song. I like that one too, but I'm waiting for a particular song. That was the last song of the evening. That's the one I was waiting for, right there. <laughs> and I don't know why you want to dance with us anyway. We're just goofy dancers, like, there, there, there. <laughs> I'm dancing. <laughs> Um, too sexy for myself. And she's not thinking sexy, she's thinking medical condition. <laughs> too sexy. Do you ever get that, a song like that stuck in your head? Has that ever happened to you where you're just walking around the house and for no reason all just like, we are farmers, bum 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 bum. <laughs> Commercials on TV are the worst, though, because they, they actually will try to get in your head on purpose. I'm going to prove it to you. Here's a commercial that's been off the air for about 20 years. Let's see how many people know this one. Help me out. Ready? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, yeah, isn't that amazing? You ever notice in the Alka-Seltzer commercials that they show you a, a funny little jingle or a funny commercial? But they never show you this part, do they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. How do they sell that stuff, huh? Uh, I love advertisement, especially when advertising is unintentionally funny. I'll give you an example. I'm driving by a Burger King, right? The Burger King sign reads, Now Hiring Closers but a windstorm had hit and the sea had fallen off the sun. <laughs> I gotta wait for the bad spellers on that joke. So I was performing for the Hormel Company in Austin, Minnesota, and I had a little extra time on my hands and went to a very interesting museum there. Do you know which one I went to? Which did I go? Yep, I did. I went to that spam museum. See, he knows. 
It's so sad that he knows that, too. <laughs> and what was really funny is they put me up in Mike's Motel at the beginning. And that, I don't think that's a chain, folks, Mike's Motel, you know. <laughs> if you're a hunter, you probably stayed in Mike's Motel. You, you, it's a classy motel. When you walk in, there's a sign on the bed that says, do not clean pheasants in room. <laughs> You know, it's a classy motel. When you flush your toilet, you can hear the guy in the next room's bathroom going, whoa, I'm showering, hot, 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 cut it out. I said, that can't possibly be me, so I flushed it again. <laughs> I hate you. And this is a true story. So I asked for a wake-up call for like 7 o'clock in the morning. So I get to the room. There's no phone in the room. Well, that's stupid. 7 o'clock in the morning, you hear this knock on the door. I open up. There's a guy in the bathroom. Get up. I'm pretty sure that was Mike, by the way. <laughs> so have you gone to the Spam Museum? Have you been there? No. Oh, you should go there, man. I, think, I don't know about you, but I could have spent all day long at the Spam Museum, but 10 minutes seemed to be just about right. <laughs> have you guys had Spam? Have you tried it at some point? Oh, you got it. Oh. My mother used to make me Spam sandwiches for elementary school. She did. She'd get that can and open up with a key and you know, plop out that big organ donor thing out on the counter. She'd take a nice slice of that with a gunk still a kind of on it, put it between two pieces of white Wonder Bread, lather it with Miracle Whip, put a nice piece of Velveeta cheese fresh from the block with the wire cutters because it's so thick, put it in a brown paper bag where it sit in a cloakroom for four and a half hours. Oh, yummy, yummy, some salmonella in my tummy. <laughs> and then some peanuts at a ho ho. How did I survive, huh? I did learn some things at the Spam Museum. I didn't know this about the word spam itself is a very interesting history to it. It actually comes from two separate words spoiled ham. Did you know that? I just made that up. But, uh, but if you microwave it, it'll explode. I couldn't wait to get home. Now, I think they got a pretty good sense of humor. They, uh, the, they have uh, the. Uh, uh, they have the Spam, they have the Spam Museum, they have the Spamettes, women who sing about Spam. They got a, a big billboard on the side of the highway that says, not all hogs make it Sturgis. <laughs> not bad, huh? And they got a brand new chili product that they're very excited about. Uh, it's, uh, and they're advertising it even on the radio. I don't think it's a good place for chili. A radio ad? You know what they use for the background music? A tuba. You think that? Hormel presents a brand new chili. It's extra chunky. I know you're laughing, but if you're 10 years old, I'm a god right now. <laughs> Sometimes you get a song in your head that you can't get rid of it for like a month, and that's really scary when it happens. I'll give you an example. Who's been to Disney World or Disneyland? Anybody? What song gets in your head? What song? What's... I heard it. I heard it. Small world. I took my family there a long time ago, and they were just little toddlers. We got halfway through the small world ride, and it broke down. Uh, not the singers, just the boats. We sat in one spot for 45 minutes. Even my son was going, I'll swim. I'll swim, Dad. I'll swim. My kids are great writers. If you've got little kids at home, just listen to them. They're so funny. I'll give you an example. One of my favorite Christopher stories. We're in St. Paul, Minnesota at Fort Snelling. It's big Fort Snelling days. We took Grandma along. Grandma's in the wheelchair at the time. The cobblestone's real fun for her. Oh, she's happy. So, and she's, so she falls asleep. She's done. And how did they end this day with a 21-gun salute? Bam! Grandma wakes up. Wow! And she actually... Flipped over in the wheelchair. My son goes, Oh my God, they shot Grandma! <laughs> so they're just great. Well, here's the song that drove me crazy. I was eight years old when it happened to me, and I really thought I was going crazy. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd go to bed at night. I, I, when I thought about nothing, that song would be there like a virus. I couldn't get rid of it. Here's the song that almost drove me crazy when I was a kid, and I'd like to share it with you tonight. <laughs> because my therapist said it would be a good idea. <laughs> and when something, no, went exactly like this. <laughs> We're having beefaroni. It's made with macaroni. Beefaroni's fun to eat. Beefaroni's full of meat. Beefaroni's really neat. Hooray! 
Beefaroni. And there's this pause in the song, like a Chinese water torture pause. It goes, hooray. <laughs> I confess, for Beefaroni. Eight years old, walking around the house. We're having Beefaroni. And you know what I discovered when I was only eight years old? Do you want to know what? It's made with macaroni. <laughs> Beefaroni's fun to eat. Beefaroni's full of meat. Beefaroni's really neat. Hooray. For beefaroni. Oh, one more time. We're having beefaroni. See, you're, you're laughing and applauding now, but you're going to hate me later tonight. Right around 4 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. Why? It's made with macaroni. Well, you guys are a great crowd. You know, you know one of my favorite things about stand up comedy is after the show, people love to tell me jokes, none of which I can ever use in public. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Three women are walking down the street. Now, they just happen to be blonde. They could have been redheads or brunettes, but they were blonde. Oh, no. One of the blonde-haired lady goes, oh, look at that poor dog with one eye. The other two go. <laughs> Did you get that? Isn't that terrible? Let's do another one. Ah. So, a blonde comes up, the guy behind the counter and says, I'll have a hamburger, french fry, and a chocolate shake. He goes, uh, ma'am, excuse me, this is a library. Well, I'm sorry. I'll have a hamburger, french fry, and chocolate shake. <laughs> That's a pretty old joke. And I was thinking, you know, why did that have to be blonde to be funny? I bet you that joke would work just as well as a... Uh... Okay, brunette, you got lucky. All right, all right, okay, brunette. Okay, okay, same joke, only if you use a brunette. Okay, you with me? Okay, here we go, all right. So, a brunette <laughs> walks up the guy behind the counter and says, uh, do you have the lost symbol, the sequel to The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown? Uh, no, we're all out of that. We just have the audio version. I tell you what, why don't you give that to me and I'll listen to it in the car while I'm taking the kids to soccer and ballet. Oh, by the way, uh, there's a blonde up at the book drop window trying to order a hamburger, french fry, and a chocolate chip. <laughs> we got her good, didn't we, huh? <laughs> okay, all right. You know, one of my other favorite things, I love it when people uh, tell me practical jokes, too. I love practical jokes. Who loves them? Yeah? I got one for you to do on the way home that audience members gave me. Here's what you do. Okay, get in the car, get to the first stoplight out there where there's a car. Pull right alongside that car like this. Then, like, reach over, roll your window down, then the roller down, too, and then go, Oh, did someone in your car cut one, too? <laughs> good, good luck finding a car that does that. That's uh, <laughs> I do a lot of work for the uh, Alzheimer's uh, Foundation. I do a lot of fundraisers for them. Uh, so they gave me a, uh, a whole bunch of brochures to, uh, to hand out. I said, I'd be more than happy to do that for you. That'd be great. Well, the next day happened to be April Fool's Day. So I thought, well, I'll have some fun with that. <laughs> so here's what I did. April Fool's Day, when people just weren't looking, I'd, uh, I'd stick one of these like in a purse or <laughs> put it in somebody's <laughs> jacket pocket, put it in a briefcase, gym bag. Yeah. End of the day, they're cleaning out their purse. Huh, Alzheimer's disease. I don't remember putting that in my purse. <laughs> on April Fool's Day, come on! Isn't that great? Uh, yeah. I got another one too. How many people like to eat at restaurants? Yes, 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 yeah. Somewhere along the line, uh, your waiter or waitress is going to come up and say, is everything okay? Can I get you something else when you've got a big mouthful of food? I sometimes think they do it on purpose. So I like to tease them a little bit. Here's what you do. Get all some Tic Tacs, okay? Here they come. You know they're going to ask that question. So secretly, pop a couple of these in your mouth. Here come. Everything okay? Huh? Oh, well, we didn't really want to complain. Oh. We think the meat's a little on the tough side. <laughs> Make sure you use the white Tic Tacs for that, okay? <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause rather than me pick on her. That was very nice. And to our happy birthday boy, Joe.
Let me have some impressions for you tonight. Uh, uh, once again, you're actually really are a really fun group. Uh, some of these impressions are really quick. Do not even blink or you miss them, and they're awfully silly. This is the first one. This is Clint Eastwood on a roller coaster ride. <laughs> we. That's it. That's my thing. Okay. Macho Man by the Village People, if it was sung in church. Macho, macho man, I've got to be a macho man. Macho, macho man, I've got to be a macho man, a man. <laughs> All right. This is my impersonation of the little corky suction thing that the dentist used to stick in your mouth and then leave for 30 minutes, the desalivator, the corky suction thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got way too much free time on my hands, folks. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do this one. All right, let's... I have to coordinate with the sound on this one. Okay, uh, this is my impersonation of why I don't go to any uh, dance club or any disco. So hit the music. Oh, here we go. Okay, why I don't go. We're having a beefaroni. <laughs> Here's my impersonation of a paranoid piece of bread. <laughs> We're toast! <laughs> That's pretty funny at the Waffle House at 3 o'clock in the morning. Huh? <laughs> Speaking of 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll put this one. I'm just so tired. I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get up. But, oh, man, my bladder. I got to go. Oh, man. All right. Well, bathroom light. Bathroom light. Bathroom light. Click. Oh, I'm blind, blind. <laughs> then we try to peek. Oh, bright light, bright light, bright light. Make the attractive face. <laughs> Here's what guys do, guys. We'll just shut the bathroom light off and memorize where the toilet is. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's not the sound I wanted to hear. <laughs> nope, not over there either. Sure wish I could stop. Man, this is gonna be a mess in the morning. Oh, my socks are getting all soggy. No, bad dog, bad dog, get out of here. Hey. hey, who put a lamp? Oh, I'm in the dining room. All right, one more, one more. This is my favorite impersonation. Too. This is what I think we all look like when we get up a little bit too early in the morning after we've been out way too late the night before. We might look a little something. If this looks like somebody you're with tonight, I apologize right now. <laughs> I love when people go, it doesn't look anything like you. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> you can actually see you through these things. It's pretty nuts, huh? You know, actually, I have uh, some glasses for sale if you want them tonight uh, for, uh, I'll be out there. But the, the, a little souvenir if you're looking for something fun to do uh, afterwards. These are so much fun. Anybody work in a cubicle? Who works in a cubicle? Anybody? Can you imagine like about four o'clock in the afternoon just peeking over the <laughs> Can I borrow your stapler? <laughs> How about nurses? Any nurses out there? Imagine somebody coming out of anesthesia. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> No, the operation was completely successful. Well, you did flatline for a while, but I don't think there'll be any complications. 
You know, put these on a baby. Oh, that's so much fun. Little baby just sits there. You know what he's probably thinking? You know, someday you'll be in a nursing home and sweet revenge will be mine. So if you want to buy these things, I have them for sale. I have some uh, wacky glasses for sale, uh, and they're five dollars, or two for ten, or three for twenty. And um, <laughs> you might even save yourself some money, but if you come home tonight, you get pulled over by the cops. Have some fun. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> and this is fun to do at the Waffle House at three o'clock in the morning. We talk over here. <laughs> I need another waffle for having a beef around here. Good night, everybody. My name's Scott Devon. You had a great time with you.